Hi everyone, and I hope you're all keeping well. Um, been an absolutely glorious uh, spell of weather of late. Normally, as astrophotographers, we're complaining about how cloudy it is and that we don't get any clear skies. Um, I've actually had so many uh, opportunities to image lately. I've just got a pile of data and um, I'd like to uh, share another image with you today. Um, and it's actually a five panel, it was gonna be a four panel mosaic, but it turned out to be a five panel mosaic because I had a little bit of a gap in it um, of the Cygnus region. So it's got the North America Nebula and the Pelican Nebula. And I took it in SHO with my modded uh, 130 PDS and I just wanted to go over another detail on the PDS which I haven't discussed uh, before but I've had a few people asking me about coma correctors and about cutting down the uh, focus tube so it doesn't intrude into the optical train so I'm going to go over those details for you so stick around my name's Glenn and you're watching Astrobloke If you've been following the channel, you know I've made quite a few modifications to my Skywatcher 130 PDS, um, all the way from painting the edges of the mirrors and everything inside with a matte black. I flocked the tube. I had a 3D printed part here made up so that it helped uh, prevent light leaks at the back. And built into that is a fan um, to help with keeping the air moving that stops things like dew forming and also stops any columns of air in there affecting the imaging train. The um, mini PC that I run this rig with has been absolutely brilliant. It's the Mealy Quieter 2 and I will be following up with a video shortly of everything I put on here and how I run it so that you can see uh, what I do. So I bought the Mealy PC and I've also got a small travel router there to improve the signal. And I've got the Pegasus Powerbox Advance here, which keeps everything nice and neat and tidy. So I made on a previous video, showed how I made this uh, dovetail, this little sandwich. And it's really good because it keeps everything inside. All the cables are nice and neat. Um, and I do want to go a little bit further with the cables. My future plan is to actually, I've actually started already, but what I'm doing is I'm looking at cables. So like here, I've got a big wrap inside. I'm going to get a cable that's as close to the right distance as possible and replace it. And the idea is to cut down on the cables so that everything's neater. And of course there's less weight too. Now, one of the questions that I get asked uh, quite often is about the focus uh, focuser and the tube from the focuser going into the optical train in here. What happens is if that goes in, cuts in front of the primary mirror and can take bites basically out of your stars and make them all misshapen. Now I don't suffer with that and the reason why is I use a coma corrector um, and I've got two that I use. One is by Bader, which is the MPC Mark III. Now this is an excellent coma corrector, doesn't do any reducing, works really well, but I actually use that mainly on my larger scope, the CT10. Now that has a flange on it, but it's unscrewable, which means that the whole um, coma corrector can be inserted inside the focus tube. Well, by doing that, you have to pull the focuser out to get focus, which means none of it is sticking inside, causing a problem. Now, I did have a Sky Watcher, or I still have a Sky Watcher uh, coma corrector, which is a 0.9 reducing one. And that's what I use on here. And what I want to do now is just literally take this off and show you what I've done. So I'm just going to undo these. And if I take the image chain out, you'll see that it goes into the tube and that allows you 
to get focus, you need to rack the focus all the way out. And so you don't have to cut anything off the tube as none of it intrudes inside. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take the coma corrector off. And I'm just going to put that back in place. Like that. So this is the coma corrector by Skywatcher. Now, if you have one, you won't have this shiny silver edge on it. And the reason why you won't have that is when this is made, it's got a lip that's on here, but it's not a lip that can be unscrewed. It's actually part of the actual unit, whether it's <clears throat> cast with that on there or whatever, but it's not, you're not able to take it off. Now I'm quite fortunate in that my father is an engineer and has lathes and uh, I was able to ask him and he laved this and turned the flange off and he was able to protect all the lenses while he did that and uh, cut that off which allows this to be inserted inside the tube. With the flange in place it'll only go in that far. So you've got quite a bit of the imaging chain sticking out. And what happens is then is about that much of the end of that focus tube is sticking inside the tube to obtain the same focus as it has got now. So, and obviously that can affect the stars. So I do know that people cut the end off of their focus tube about 15 mil. Um, and I've worked my way around doing that um, by using this coma corrector. So if I use this, uh, which is reducing, brings this down to f4.5 and from 650 millimetres to 585 millimetres, which is quite nice, um, no problems at all. And the MPCC, that doesn't have a flange that stays on, you can unscrew it and take it off and that slides all the way in too. So um, that's one way of getting around it. Now, I'm pretty sure if you went to any engineering firm, you could most probably get that turned off or something similar. I can't promise that, obviously, but uh, that's how I did it. And I do know other people, as I say, cut about 15 mil off the end of their uh, tube um, to put it in there. But um, I was glad I didn't have to do that. So one of the... Uh, restrictions of a scope with 585 millimeters is obviously field of view especially when you're going for a large target like the Cygnus region but there's a great facility in Nina which is mosaics so when you're framing your target you can actually select how many panels you want across and vertically and it will automatically frame it up and give the coordinates for each of the panels one of the reasons why I went from four panels to five was without me meaning to do it, um, basically between doing the panels, I'd actually move something and I knocked the focuser and I twisted the camera. Didn't mean to, but obviously I twisted the frame and it meant that it was at an angle and it left a little slither of a gap. So I had to get another frame to fill the gap, but it's not too much of a problem. And uh, as I say, uh, Nina does a great job with the mosaic panels. So as I say, I've been taking images of the Cygnus region and I'm going to share that with you at the end of the video. Okay, so welcome to the mini PC. This is connected via the uh, Google remote desktop, which works really well at home on my network. So I'm just going to call up Nina and show you how to get a mosaic in Nina. So we go to the framing tab and you've got a number of ways of looking at images on the framing tab. NASA Sky Survey is good. I like to use HIPS too. It gives a more uh, sort of a prettier uh, a look. If you haven't got internet, you can use the offline sky map and you can even load in your own files if you want to uh, carry on with something that you've done before but you didn't save it. So let's go back to HIPS too. So in the object name, I want the North America Nebula, which is NGC 7000. Now, if I just push enter now, 
it will just stay on these uh, deck and RA coordinates of zero and you won't get anything on the screen so make sure you click the one that comes up in the list and there it is and you can set the field of view you can make it bigger by up in this number or smaller obviously the bigger this is the longer it takes to load in if I push load image because I've had it before it's loaded very quickly this is my field of view 585 millimeters with the 2600 mm and that's the field of view it gives me and as you can see I can't fit the whole of the target in there you've got rotation options here with this uh, but that's not going to make any difference with this so what we need to do if I want to get the whole area is do a mosaic and we've got here panels so we can add a horizontal panel we can add a vertical panel and that pretty much covers most of the target and we can add as many panels as we want and make it as big as we want but obviously the bigger it is the more work there is let's stick with four panels for now so once you've got your four panels one two three and four you've got a couple of choices you can either add them to the target list and they'll be there in the targets so if you then go to your sequencer on the right hand side you've got targets and you can add it in there and then drag it across and use it um, what I tend to do is actually um, click on the actual add target and then I go to my sequence so now I've got some templates I've already made up and I've got one called SHO target which are 10 minute subs of sulfur hydrogen alpha and oxygen so I'll call that up and that will give me a starting point which I can make adjustments to so it basically starts the sequence focuses slews and centers gets all the guiding going and then starts taking the images and it will go through S H and O so looking up here you start with panel one and you can actually run through each panel in the same night if you want to take one of each and then go to panel two then panel three panel four or as I do is I build a panel normally I do a panel an evening and then move on to another panel the next evening that's free when I come to put the mosaic together what I like to use is Astro Pixel Processor I build each of the panels and then put them in the mosaic tool and it puts them together you can just chuck all the data in and it will do it automatically but it's much more reliable and quicker if you do each panel separately and put them together but there you go that is basically how you build it and then you can save the uh, file that you've got here to your computer so you can recall it anytime so you can continue the work with the uh, project that you've started and that's how you uh, basically uh, frame and set up a mosaic in Nina. The way I like to put my mosaics together is I've run each of the panels separately and got the masters and I'm just jumping into Astro Pixel Processor after I've done each of the panels. Now you can just put all of the data in and it will do this but it will take a very long time. So what I do is I make all of my, I get all my masters for the, f I've got five panels in this case so I'm going to call this a five panel uh, mosaic. now just for this purpose and I'm just going to load in the actual five panels I've got so I've got hydrogen alpha oxygen and sulfur masters for each of the five panels so I'm going to select all of those and load them into Astro Pixel Processor if I just scroll it up there they are you've got the five sulfur five oxygen and the five hydrogen alpha now if you don't remember all of these settings, uh, Astro Pixel Processor will prompt you if you've forgotten something and uh, help you along the way. But basically, you load them in. They're all I've already calibrated them because I've run them through once before they're masters. I like to always up the Analyze Stars to 2000, that helps. And then under Registration, we want to make sure that the scale stop is 10 at least and uh, Astro Pixel Processor will prompt you if you forget this I flip the descriptors I use dynamic distortion correction 
and we take off same camera and optics even if you have used the same camera and optics. On the registration mode we're not going to be normal we're going to be mosaic. Okay. On the uh, normalize we put that on advanced and under the integrate we need to scroll down um, to the enable multiband blending so that we can get all of the edges of the um, panels blended together I'm going to make this 20% because that was the overlap I used and uh, that shall be that so I'm going to press integrate okay not doing anything else so I'm going to bang it up to the full 24 threads and uh, I'll fast forward this even though my PC is quite quick the mosaic does take a little while but um, I'm going to fast forward this to the end Okay, and uh, APP has finished doing that, and we've got a sulfur, an oxygen, and a hydrogen alpha five panel mosaic all stitched together. I'll quickly make this a color image. So if we go to combine the channels, we'll combine it as an SHO Hubble palette. So we're just going to add the five channels. just confirm each filter for the channel recalculate and boom and there you have your final color image that you can then edit crop um, and sort all the colors out and everything but uh, the detail levels are amazing uh, this is the nice advantage of mosaics yes they are a bit more work but of course you're getting real fine details in there so you can zoom right into the image but I'll get this edited and finished up and uh, share it with you um, I hope you found this uh, useful as you can see my my panels there I've got one there one up there one there one there so I had to stick one in here to fill the little slither of gap I had when panel 5 uh, wasn't done but uh, it's come out really well and of course I can just keep adding to the panels and trying to bring out even more detail. But um, this is my five panel mosaic of the Cygnus region. Hope you like it and until next time please take care and I'd like to wish you all clear skies.